All right, I've seen both of these types of pressure sensors. One is plastic and one is the old copper style. And on this, on this uh, pressure switch, you just, I'll just cut this off, I'll just cut this off and stab it into there. And that's it. Uh, that's what they say, I've never used one of these before. So let's do this, it's exciting. And I think we just pretty much blocked the other three. Well, we put a gauge in one, right? And then block the other three and hook up the wires. So when I come to the wires, I'll, I'll come back. All right, we're just installing the, what do they call that? Pressure switch. And uh, it has to be plugged in a couple of spots. There. And the back. <clears throat> and the hard part with working with air is that you you never know if you're going to get another turn <laughs> when when you uh, or something like that. So I'm going to face it up. It feels a little tighter. <clears throat> and then we're going to uh, hook up the vias. That gives you the. Uh, instructions on the inside of here and it doesn't tell you which side is left or white or black which white is neutral and black is hot so we're going the top though is the line so we'll do that first so now on this particular unit the cover is going to come upside down on this one because there was just no other way to mount it. White on the motor side. We'll double check all this before we turn anything on. There, that looks good. Oh, something just went clunk. That's a good sound. Alrighty. And I did the stab lock on the plastic. Right there. I think they call those shark bites. The plumbers call those shark bites. So now the only thing left are the two quarter turn drains that go in the... Ah! <laughs> I'm getting tired. I'm starting to drop stuff. Now they come with a pre-goo on them, but I'm going to add just a little bit of my tape. These go right up underneath here and into the bottom, just like that. And I tell you, for draining, there we go, sorry, for draining these tanks, just turning that dial, is so much better than using one of these. I hate these. Because when you're looking at it from the top, you don't know which way to turn it. Plus, they kind of, when they go in, they drain air, and when they go out, they don't. So I've quit using those. So I'll just finish tightening up those two, and I think we're going to fire this baby up. All right, we're ready to fire up. The pop valve or the high pressure relief valve is there. Uh, the regulator is back here with a gauge. We can see it while you're standing up, right? Because it's going to be on the floor. It's connected over to our two plugs. Our sensor for the tank is over here and it's connected with a shark bite connector right there. Our outside world power comes in here, a nice big heavy cable. And our inside to the motor is over here. We've got the switch, and right now it's off and then on. It feels, it doesn't feel quite right, but uh, that's life. And I've got a little bit of soapy water over there on the bench for when we start this thing up. So when I plug it in, it shouldn't take off. Okay, that's a good thing. Now we watch the gauges. And pressure. So I've given it a pretty good look over at anything I've touched. The only thing I'm not 100% on is how this yellow hose attaches through this bulkhead 
and into this gauge or into our outputs sorry gauge and then I got my new plastic line instead of the copper line and I took this off of a wheelbarrow compressor the, the black plastic one so anyway I am ready <laughs> stop it at 25 pounds and we're gonna just see if we have control with these relief valves good excuse me guys good okay let's do this again <laughs> I'm going to see if I have to turn this down a bit. That's pretty high pressure, guys. There we go. Now, I'm just going to we have to get it to shut off. So I think it's probably an adjustment in here. All right, guys. The main gauge is at 140, and the uh, regulator is at about 110. We'll just crank it up a little bit. Maybe 118, somewhere in there. Now we're going to release some air from the... That's the nice thing about these, eh? Cool. I'd like to see that at about 125 or 130, but that's all right. It's working. Okay, all that's left is I got to change the oil, and I got my feet on the front, on the back. I mean, where the handles are, and there's too much room under even here to have any feet, so it sits on the front tire. Well, hi guys, I'm back working on the compressor. I thought I had everything uh, working perfectly. But I thought it was the pressure switch. It, when it went to release the pressure back off the head so that it can start pumping with pressure on the system, once in a while, and now more often, it would stay leaking here. But it's not the pressure switch, it's the gate valve holding the water back. So I'm just cleaning up all of the crud and stuff out of the gate valve. I did this one. And I don't know exactly how what that should be set at. And now I'm doing this one here. I don't know the parameters. But I'm just cleaning stuff up. So in here there's a, a spring and some goo. <laughs> so we'll clean that up. And we'll see what else we got. Ah, uh, there's the valve. And that went like that. Into there like that. So 10 to 1, that's the part that's not sealing. Let's get some carb spray in there. Now it all comes together. And for it to all come together, we have to tear it all apart. Gosh, you just never know what's going to be interesting and what isn't going to be interesting. So I'm just popping this back together the way it came apart. There's a spring and a little valve. I'll tighten that up and we'll see if this fixes our problem. Okay, it should turn off any minute now. And we're getting leakage. So if there's pressure in here, there's also pressure in here. 
Okay. All right. So just let me show you something. Okay. This thing is filthy. Now this is the little Allen key I didn't even know was there that holds this valve in. This valve here goes in like that. And you can even see on the side here, there's the Allen key mark that holds it right there. So we'll make sure we put that back together the way it was. I'm just taking this Allen, uh, Allen bolt out of here so that we can clean it even better. Each time I do this, I get a little more. Unbelievable. I might even take the rest of the body apart again so that we can spray through the whole thing, eh? Why not? I've got three of them. I've got a plastic one, I've got a brass one, and I've got a wire one. So when it gets down to the finer stuff, you use the brass one. But I use them all. And then I've got this little guy that I shove right in there and go around. It's a beater, but it's a good little brush. Alright, I've got everything clean. Oops, but there's always one more little tiny piece of varnish, right? It's crazy. So right there's the whoops, right there is the dimple where this uh, Allen key went in, and I'm gonna put it back together the same way. I'm not taking any chances. So this goes up into here like that. I think we'll put the spring on it just to center it if that's even possible. No. Oh yes, the spring is even wider at one end, so we'll just tighten this up a little bit. Good enough. Alright, now, this is our gate valve, I believe, it should go in there like that. And just leave this off too. I might even be able to replace that one. This has really been an interesting fix. Okay, what side? And of course, it's multi sizes of wrenches, right? <clears throat> no, this is where my. I don't. How tight do you make it? All right, just to catch up to what's going on, I'm tightening up the main tube back to the gate or the check valve. I still have to put this small uh, ring in and then connect up the air. So when I get that done, it's just five minutes work. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I got it. I cleaned out. You saw me cleaning out all of the varnish out of that uh, check valve. There's way more in there than a check valve. The check valve, I think this is just an auto, a, a drain on the top here. So anyway, let's do a cycle. It stops at about 135 pounds. This gauge reads 10, pardon me, 10 high. And I've got the regulator set at 110.
So that's running good. Thanks for watching. I think I got it.